Welcome to this video on solving word problems involving systems of equations. Let's look at the steps to solving these word problems. First, we need to define two variables in the context of the problem. Then we will create a table to organize the information that's being given to us. We will put this information into a table and use that table to find two equations that describe the word problem. Then we can use either substitution or elimination to solve our system of linear equations and check our work. Lastly, we will write a complete sentence to express our answers in the context of the problem. So notice when we look at these steps in step four, we are told that we can use either substitution or elimination. Let's begin. Example one says, in a child's bank, there are 11 coins with a total value of $1.85. The coins are all either quarters or dimes. How many of each coin does the child have? In step one, we need to define our variables. The variables that we're looking for will always be indicated by the last sentence or the last part of the word problem. It says, how many of each coin does the child have? Well, what are the two coins that are discussed in this problem? There are quarters and there are dimes. So one variable is going to be the number of quarters that the child has. And the other variable is going to be the number of dimes that the child has. So I'm going to make this the letter Q, and I'm going to make this variable the letter D. So in other words, Q represents the number of quarters, and D represents the number of dimes. It's important to understand that if I had just done this, if I had just said Q is equal to quarters, okay, and D equals dimes, okay, that is insufficient, that is incorrect. Why is that wrong? Well, I need to describe what attribute I'm looking for. Is Q the monetary value of the quarters or is it the number of quarters? A quarter is worth 25 cents. So is Q 25 cents or is it the number of coins a child has in the bank? So you have to be more specific than just saying that Q is quarters and D is dimes. Be careful with that when you define your variables. Okay, so um, we are gonna have two different attributes. We have our quarters here, and we have our dimes here, okay? So one thing we know is the number of coins. Okay, so we just used our variables to define the number of quarters and the number of dimes. The problem doesn't tell us exactly how many quarters there are, so we're just gonna put Q here. Q is the number of quarters, and we're gonna find Q later. D is the number of dimes. Again, we don't know that. We're going to try to find it. The last row is always going to be total. So what is the total number of coins this child has? Well, it tells us right here that the child has 11 total coins. So we're gonna put 11 here. What else do we know about the coins besides their number? Well, we know the value of the coins. So it's not explicitly stated in the problem. I guess it's assumed that we know that quarters are worth 25 cents, and it's assumed that we know that dimes are worth 10 cents. Now, of course, you, add these, you could add these together and get 35 cents, but that's not really useful or helpful. So we're just gonna leave that last column or that last box blank. All right, what about the last column in this table? What should we put there? Well, one helpful thing to do is to look back at our word problem and say, what value have we not used? Well, we haven't used this number, $1.85. The $1.85 is the total amount of money this child has in their bank. So $1.85 should go in this last box. Well, we still need to know how much, money of, how much of that money is coming from quarters and how much of that money is coming from dimes. So... This is gonna be the total value of the coins. So let's kind of reason through and think about this. So if I have one quarter, let me use a different color here. If I have one quarter, I know that I have 25 cents. 
If I have two quarters, I know that I have 50 cents. So again, this is Q. This is the amount of money that I have, right? If I have three quarters, I know that I have 75 cents here. So what is the pattern? What are we doing? Well, we're literally just multiplying the number of quarters by 25 cents, right? One times 0.25 is 0.25. Two times 25 is 50 cents. Three times 25 is 75 cents. So what I can do is I can write here 0.25Q, right? I can multiply the number of quarters by the value of the quarters to get the total amount of money that's coming from quarters. I could do the same thing with dimes, right? If I have one dime, I have 10 cents. If I have two dimes, I have 20 cents and so on. Therefore, the total amount of money that's coming from the dimes is 10 cents times the number of dimes. Now, you might be wondering at this point, is it really necessary to go through all this work? Do I really need to take the time to set up this table? And let me show you why I teach things this way. The reason I do this is because if you set up your table properly, the equations just fall out of it. So our first equation is gonna come from this uh, column right here. So in other words, the number of quarters plus the number of dimes is equal to 11. That's one of our two equations. Then if we look at this last column here, we find that 0.25 times the number of quarters plus 0.10 times the number of dimes is equal to $1.85. And now we have two equations and two variables and we can use either substitution or elimination to solve them. So let's go ahead and solve these two equations. So we have quarters plus dimes is equal to 11. Then we have 0.25Q plus 0.10D is equal to 1.85. Okay, so you can use either substitution or elimination. For this problem, I'm going to use substitution. So in order to use substitution, remember the first thing you have to do is to isolate one of your variables. So I will isolate my Q variable by subtracting the number of dimes from both sides. Then once I do this, I can put this expression in place of Q. So in place of Q, I'm going to write 11 minus D. And then I'm just going to fill in the equation around that. So I have 0.25 times 11, that's 275, minus 0.25D plus 0.10D equals 1.85. Okay, so I can combine these because they are like terms and they're on the same side of the equation. That gives me negative 0.15d equals 1.85. Would then subtract 275 from both sides. So we have negative 0.15d equals negative 0.90. We can divide both sides by negative 0.15. And we get that the number of dimes is equal to six. Notice that we're not quite finished yet, right? Because we still need to find the number of quarters. And then we should probably also take a minute to check our work. Okay, so we have, uh, let's go back here. We have the number of quarters plus the number of dimes is equal to 11. So if the number of dimes is equal to six, um, probably have to have five quarters, okay? So again, we have six dimes and five quarters. Let's just check our work really fast. Okay, so we're gonna check using this other equation. Um, okay, our other equation is 0 0.25 times the number of quarters. Okay, let's check this. So we have 0.25Q plus 0.10D equals 1.85. Okay, 
So we have five quarters and we have six dimes. Does that really give us a dollar eighty-five? Well, it gives us a dollar twenty-five and then another sixty cents. So sure enough, that does give us a dollar eighty-five. Okay, so we have checked our work. So um, let's write a sentence. What does this mean? This means that the child has oops, has six dimes and five quarters. Example two, there were 41 tickets sold for an event. Tickets for children cost $1.50 and tickets for adults cost $2.00. Total receipts for the event were $73.50. How many of each type of ticket were sold? The first thing we need to do is define our variables. Remember, the last sentence, or the last part of the question, helps us figure out what our variables are. So it says each type of ticket. Well, what are the two types of tickets? Well, there are tickets for children. and there are tickets for adults. I want to uh, remind you that if I simply do this, that is incorrect. Why is that wrong? Well, that's wrong because I'm not telling you what attribute of the tickets I'm interested in. Specifically, this question asks me how many of each type. Okay, that is the key. So in other words, what I want is the number of children's tickets and the number of adult tickets. So again, if you forget to write the part of the um, variable that says number of, number of, then you're going to miss points, okay? So C is the number of children's tickets, A is the number of adult tickets, right? Because if I just say children's tickets or adult tickets, I could be talking about the price of the ticket or some other attribute. I have to specify what about the ticket do I want to know? All right, so let's start filling in our table. So we have children's tickets. We have adult tickets, and of course, the last row is always going to be total, okay? So one attribute that we have is the number of tickets sold, okay? So number of tickets sold. Okay, notice that we don't know how many children's tickets were sold, but we did just to find that variable, so we'll call it C. We don't know how many adult tickets were sold, so we'll call it A. However, we do know that there were 41 tickets total sold, so the total can be 41. What else do we know? Well, we know something about the price of each ticket. We know that children's tickets cost $1.50, and we know that adult uh, tickets for adults cost $2, okay? So this is the cost of the ticket, okay? And again, of course, I could add those together, but that's not an equation. There's no variables there, so it's not useful or helpful for me to fill in that last box, okay? So what we want to know is the total profit or total sale made on each type of ticket. Okay, um, if I go back to my word problem, I can see the one value I didn't use is 73.50. Again, that's the total profit that came from selling both types of tickets, okay? Um, and again, just like the last problem, we're going to write 150 times C. In other words, if I sold one child's ticket, that would be $1.50. If it was two, it would be $3, and so on and so forth. So I can just multiply the cost of the ticket by the number of tickets sold. You can do the same thing here, okay? So I get 2a or 2.00a. Again, um, just remember the reason that we go through all of this work and effort is because if you set up the table correctly, the equations just fall out. 
So here we have C plus A is equal to 41. And that's one equation. And then the other equation is uh, $1.50 times C plus $2 times A is equal to $73.50. So those are our two equations. So from here, we can solve them using either substitution or elimination, and then write our answer as a word problem or as a sentence. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have C plus A equals 41, and then we have 1.5C plus 2A equals 73.50. Let's just make sure that that's right. Okay. So again, you can use either substitution or elimination. Um, just to give you variety in the examples, I will use elimination on this problem. So for elimination, remember what we need to do is we need to obtain variables with the same coefficient and opposite signs. So I am going to choose to multiply this first equation by negative 2 so that the a's cancel out. So that's going to give me negative 2, uh, oops, sorry, negative 2c minus 2a equals negative 82. Then the second equation I did not modify at all, so I'll just bring it down. Okay, and then I'm going to add these together. Okay, so this gives me negative 0.5c. These cancel out. Oh, well, should be an equal sign here. Sorry about that. Okay, um, equals negative 8.5. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 0.5. And I find out that the number of children's tickets sold was 17. Okay, so I found the number of children's tickets. I still need to find the number of adult tickets. Okay, and if you're keeping track of steps here, this is step one, oops, this is step one, okay, and this is step two. All right, so step three is to use either equation to find my other variable. I will use this one, it's just so much easier. So I have 17 plus something is 41. If I subtract 17 from both sides, you can find out the number of adult tickets that were sold. So 41 minus 17 is 24. Okay, and of course we always need to check our work because it's easy to make mistakes when you're doing this much uh, math. Okay, so we have 1.5 times 17 plus 2 times 24 equals 73.5. Okay, and in fact, this is 73.5, so it checks out. Okay, so now I can be confident that there were 24 adult tickets and 17 children's tickets that were sold.